D4, you know you're an introverted mom when reminding the kids to do their chores is too much talking. Hi there, this is Alyssa from Unbusy Saying Super Moms, helping you handle the kids you already have and reach super mom status with these. So what if giving the kids their chore reminders and getting help around the house really drains your talking batteries? What are you supposed to do then? All right, here are a couple different ideas to handle this. You can do a hands-off chore reminder system. So you do not nag, you do not remind, you do not point out that they're falling behind on the time. You just come to gather everyone at the end of the day and say, all right, we're going to go through. Who checked off their things? You can say, well, I mean, first off, this really only works when they're a little bit older or a little more responsible. So I don't suggest dumping this on your five-year-old or if you have a very rebellious anti-authority eight-year-old. Even if he might be capable, he's not going to do it. But you can do this if you're kind of getting the sense that your kids don't like you micromanaging them. Totally fine. I will hand everything off to you. I just want the trash taken out, the dog fed, the indoor plants watered, your bed made when I come check your room at 8 p.m. tonight. You can do it that way if your kids are old enough and responsible enough, especially if they're into personal autonomy. Maybe they're not necessarily responsible, but they sure are independent and stubborn. You could give that a try if this is your kids. Now, another option, if they need check-ins throughout the day, but again, you don't really, your, your brain is too full to hold how many kids, how many chores, and which time of day they all need to be happening, because that's a lot. Give them the standard chore chart system. So yes, I'm talking about the fridge magnet, flip ups, whatever, something like that. And whenever they say, mom, what am I supposed to be doing? You tell them, go check your chore chart. So the reminding is off you. The whatever exactly specifically they need to be doing, you're not keeping track in your head. Oh, you did feed the dog, but you forgot to wire the plants. You just say, go check your chore chart. When they come and say, oh, was there anything else? It's go check the chore chart. You can read or you can look at the symbol, visual symbols. You go to choose which one to do next. This will definitely cut those constant reminders. So that will also reduce your talking batteries. If you only have to say, check the chore chart, check the chore chart, check the chore chart, it's not too bad. Another thing is, yes, if you're getting frustrated that your kids don't follow through, this will probably only work for one kid in your household, this third technique, yes. You can train them to remember Mondays are laundry days, Tuesdays, we dust, Wednesdays, clean the bathroom, Thursdays, vacuum, whatever your personal household schedule is. Yes, you can probably train one of your kids to do that, but only one. See, that's the thing we're expecting all of our kids to get to this level. And most of them don't have that personality. So maybe it's your firstborn, maybe it's one of your firstborns, you've got boys and girls, but probably only one kid will get there. Just totally independent and responsible at the same time without reminders. And the only time they need a reminder is if you happen to notice they haven't done something, you say, hey, Megan, did you remember to put the bread in? And then they'll either be telling you, yes, I just wanted to finish my homework first because I'm almost done and I'm really heading the game here. Or they'll say, oh, no, I forgot. Thanks for telling me. And run and go do it. So you only remind them if you actually see that they haven't done it. And then your reminding isn't reminding. It's not go do this. It's, hey, I was just checking up. How has this gotten done? You're really treating them like kind of the employee or the manager. You're not ordering them to do something. You're saying, I'm just seeing where you were in the process. But again, this is what we expect as moms, but it's actually a fairy tale <laughs> for most of the kids. So appreciate the one kid you have that is like this, but we need to figure out something for the rest of your kids, all right? Now, the fourth thing is, yes, you decide you will remind them throughout the day in a kind of a low key, hey, did you get the trash out yet? So you're taking partial responsibility, but if they don't do it, they are going to get a consequence. Preferably a consequence that they chose for themselves ahead of time, like no screen time for three days or, you know, depending on, it might not be three days, but you know, if it's something like, you didn't put the trash out and we cannot fit more trash in the trash bin unless it goes out every week. Feel free to make it a serious consequence because 
I know that your chores are not typically as long as it's done by bedtime today. If you want bread and fresh rolls for supper, sorry, it needs to be in by like 2 p.m. or something, or else it will not have enough time to rise. So maybe the trash truck comes at 7 a.m. in the morning. They cannot run out in their pajamas and get it because by the time they blearily wake up, get some sandals on and go out to shove it down, the trash truck is halfway down the street. It has to be done the previous night. So there are definitely times in the day, you know, this is time sensitive. And it is a chore and you are perfectly capable of doing it, but you cannot just float on your own. All right, then you can remind them about something. And if they have not done it, because it's time sensitive, you do it yourself. Or, you know, if you choose, the family doesn't get the rolls at supper and then you explain why. And then they get a significant consequence, something that you chose as a family together. That's the, all right, I wasn't micromanaging. I did give you a last rescue kind of warning. And if you didn't follow through, yeah, you get something. Real life consequence. What happens to grownups when you don't leave for work on time? Don't fill up the vehicle when it needed it. Mm, bad things happen. So those are four different, different methods. And remember, only one of them was get my kids responsible enough so they do it on their own. Because that will probably only work for one of your kids' personality. But let's recap the other three. You can completely hand it off to them. You pre-write a chore list and you just say, I'm expecting this to be done these times, run through it for them and hand it off. And you're not gonna look it up until you know bedtime, end of school day, whatever it is. That's for the stubborn independent types. They do need some cognitive maturity. So your five-year-old probably won't work. Number two, you can lean on the chore chart. So if your kids come to you saying, um, you know, if it's Saturday cleaning day, okay, day, okay, I finished that. Um, can I have my iPad now? Go check the chore chart. Do you have anything else on? You didn't have to remember if they cleaned the toilets but forgot the mirrors. You just said, go check the chore chart. You made the chore chart the bad guy, the disciplinary. Since it doesn't have any feelings, it's pretty good at that. And number, th um, number three, the ultra responsible kid. Number four, you will remind them for time sensitive chores. Hey, I need you to come make bread now. You've already told them ahead of time that you will need to have bread in by 2 p.m. So it gives them the um, space for initiative. If they wanna come over at 1.30 and do it on their own, you praise them for that and you say, thank you. Good job remembering. If they haven't remembered, you, know, you call them at 2 p.m. If they choose not to obey, if the issue is in the follow through and the obedience, then that's the major consequence because it was time sensitive, it was not a do by then. Overflowing bread the next morning does not work and does not fulfill bread at supper. So you can either let them clean up the bread the next morning, you can do it yourself or you can skip bread for the family that evening, your choice. But that one also removes the remembering for you. You may still have that pop-up reminder in your planner, your phone, saying the 2 p.m. bread, you know, the before I go to bed at night, put out trash. But you're not sitting there micromanaging the kid, reminding them 10 dozen times during the day, which is what you really wanted to get away from. Because let's get real. We're introverts. We're moms. We're running a household. We've got a lot of kids. And that stacks up into a lot of talking time because we're trying to train their character. We want them to pitch in, be responsible, do a good job when they work at something. And that means a lot of talking and that drains our introvert bond batteries really fast. So try one of these four strategies, probably one of the three strategies, not the magically have a bunch of firstborn responsible kids one. It's not gonna work unless you have like triplets the first time and see how that works. I think if you can cut down on the talking and the remembering for your kids, you're going to feel so much better. Now, if you need to unbusy your mom life, aka get de-stressed without ignoring the cooking, the cleaning, or your kids, watch how this be a sane super mom, a free class I made for you, and learn the three secrets to an unstressed mom life. Because you can get started on being super mom and do it the easy way. I'll put the link for you in the description below. And that's it for today. I will see you in the next video.